hi everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you are all doing well happy monday welcome to a brand new series on my channel this is all about father's day the next few videos will be father's day inspired of course we all have different fathers with different interests mine loves gardening so we are doing miniature oh my goodness me, there is something about miniature and miniature worlds and just having this absolutely amazing, imaginative, small, tiny world to feel inspired by. This mould is a Katie Sue silicone mould. Now, Katie Sue actually does silicone molds for cake making baking chocolate very much food orientated but because they are silicon they are perfect for resin as well just make sure once you've used them for resin don't ever use them for food this is the 2016 katie sue garden accessory mold and how cute it's got the little terracotta pots and the wellington boots and the watering can and oh my goodness me as soon as i saw this on amazon i knew it was my dad left right and center it was my dad so for this video i'm going to be using a combination i'm going to be using the polycraft fc 3680 in black now you would have seen this if you saw last night's haul video this is available in the uk this is a polyurethane resin available in the uk all linked below now honestly this is like a, a chuck it all in one of my favorite things to do if you've been with me a while you'll know i just love to grab what I've got, chuck everything into the one mold. So if you're thinking about doing anything like this, you can use your dried flowers, you can use your washi tape, stickers, gems, glitter, anything you have to hand to make something along this line. But I am very much going down the botanical garden route. So you could use dried leaves, stamps, temporary tattoos. The list is endless. So if you would like to try something like this, please have a look at what you've got. See what you've got that would work for your project. Now, I will link Katie Sue's molds in my Amazon storefront. She does everything, guys, very much like fishing, all of these different things like music molds, fishing molds, loads of different hobbies on there that would be perfect for so many different people and what their interests are. Okay, back to the video, Claire, calm down. <laughs> I'm going to use my micro brush to get down in. These are Diddy, teeny tiny miniature garden tools. And this is what sold this mold to me. Again, I purchased this mold myself on Amazon. It will be linked below. So for the gardening tools, we have a spade and we have a little hand fork. So for those, I'm going very much down the metallic root on the I guess the metal edges of them. So we've got a little bit of gold, copper and silver to make them look, I guess used, a little bit aged. So with the silver, that's gonna pull through the silver metal that they usually come with a silver metal. Um, but then adding the gold and the copper is gonna give them this touch of mud. <laughs> you know, they've been used in the muddy garden and they're very much loved gardening tools. For the handles, I'm just using a combination of brown mica powder and cream mica powder. And I'm just making sure with my micro brush that I've got that powder well and truly down and in. Because like I said, they're teeny tiny, little teeny tiny miniature pieces. So just make sure that every single millimeter has been coated in your powder before you add the background. Now for the pots, I really want the terracotta pot look. However, I don't have a terracotta powder. I searched my entire stash. So I'm doing a combination of like brown mica powder and gold mica powder just to give me the impression that they are indeed terracotta pots. I actually think you can kind of get away with it. Like as soon as someone sees it, they're going to think terracotta pot. For the watering can, I've got one in my garden and it is green. Now you don't need to use mica powder here. You can simply just pour resin straight into this mold. It will handle resin really, really well. You don't need to brush your molds first, but I wanted to. So I am using the Arteza Moss Green and then I'm also using the Khaki in the Resin Pro Powder. And actually they're very similar. So <laughs> I could have maybe gone with a darker green here. I wanted some kind of difference in the two. Now with the Wellington boots, I'm actually just gonna keep them black. So I'm just cleaning them out to make sure that there's no mica powder residue. 
Now this is the UK polyurethane. Now I did do a Google search. There is polyurethane available in America, Australia. And of course, let's not forget the Let's Resin Polyurethane that you've recently seen on my channel. This one here is available in the UK from I Love Mixed Media or direct with MB Fiberglass. And I have a code for I Love Mixed Media if you fancy getting it from there. It comes in black, white, cream and clear. But for this one, I am using the Jet Black. So I didn't add any color whatsoever to this polyurethane it comes black it's mixable mixable yeah mixable and measurable one to one by weight so just make sure that you mix it well you've got around 30 seconds it's very similar it's very similar to the other polyurethane you would have recently seen on my channel you've got 30 seconds to mix it and all of a minute to pour it <laughs> on the bottle it says two minutes work time Honestly, I wouldn't trust that. I, I, I just don't think it does have two minutes work time. Um, really short work time. But anyway, here you are. I made quite a mess here. Honestly, there's a lot of overspill and that's okay. We can trim it back. I'm just going in with a cocktail stick to make sure that I get right down into the nooks and crannies and everything is completely filled with that resin. Are you ready? Oh how cute are these what is it about miniatures it's just a a window into a magical world don't you think it just it's escapism isn't it does anyone else find miniatures is is literally like fairy tale escapism anyway oh my gosh i just love them so much i love them so much i literally want all of her molds oh, anyway I do do a little bit of trimming here. So I use my craft blade to trim around all of the edges. Now I do have a deburring tool, but honestly, for me on these, the craft blade was so much quicker and easier. You know, you can just get in there and get it off. Now with the Wellington boots, I, I've decided I'm not going to use them in today's project, but, but, but I did want to show you the mold and what they look like. You can, of course, paint if you make them out of like an eco or anything like that, you can paint them afterwards. But because they're black, I decided to try some of this embellishment wax, which was meant to be turquoise. I got a bit confused because <laughs> this was turquoise embellishing wax. But look at this. What? <laughs> I'm very new to this wax scene, guys. You can tell I'm very new. I've only got one other color and that's silver. But look at this. Tell me how a cream wax comes out blue i'm fascinated the alchemy blows my mind how cool do these boots look i think this on its own even these wellies on its own they'd be perfect as a key ring as a gift for someone who loves to garden or loves to go walking in the woods on a wet rainy day oh my gosh I'm craving rain. It's like 30 degrees here today <laughs> and I'm craving rain. I decided to rub some over the green watering can and it's given it the most beautiful two-tone sheen. Okay, let's start creating even more. I know we've been creating, but you know what I mean. Garden shed. I decided I am going to make a miniature English garden keyring for my dad which is going to ruin the surprise because he watches my videos. And I looked up free printable images of a garden shed. Now, I don't know what garden sheds look like where you're from, but this <laughs> is a standard British garden shed. It is boring brown wood. And I knew that's exactly what my dad's shed looks like. Although I think he has painted his green. Now, for the first part of the keyring, I am using the exact same polyurethane, but this is from the UK. So this is the MB Fiberglass Polyurethane in white. And into that white, I have added some blue alcohol. If you saw my recent video where I used the white polyurethane, the blue alcohol in the polyurethane works it works so beautifully and because the poly is white it cures white it's gonna pastelize so this is very 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 sped up like a thousand times sped up and there you see it it has pastelized and we've got some gorgeous van gogh is it van gogh yeah van gogh that's sky painting that's what it reminds me of i figured this is perfect this is absolutely fine for a background for our miniature garden now next up 
Here's the thing, I am using UV resin in this video as well, but please know that if you want to do something like this, you don't have to have polyurethane, you don't have to have UV resin, you can do everything that you see me doing here today, you can do it with epoxy resin. It just would take longer, that is all. Might just take a few days because I am doing multiple layers here. So the first thing I did was stick the tape over my shed. I just printed that off on normal printer paper from my laptop it needs sealing it needs to be protected you can't just put that straight into resin so make sure you've covered it in tape or you laminate it next up we're using some moss dried moss i got this from baker ross this is going to give me that really country garden look the trees the bushes the shrubbery the plants even though it's kind of samey same, it's going to give us that illusion of this miniature garden. Now, at this point, I didn't quite know where I was going with it, but I always trust the process. When, when I create something where we are just chucking everything in, I always say to you guys, trust the process. Now, I did use UV resin for this, which was a bit of a risk because how is it going to cure underneath the moss? But I figured the more layers I do, the more that moss is going to get trapped in there anyway so again it, it was it worked out it worked out next up we're going to use some dried pressed flowers i think these were from let's resin but guys don't quote me on it it's been a while and i don't want them to look all neat like that so i'm gonna just shove them in i'm using my micro brush here to actually like shove the flowers down inside the moss and hoping that that would break them up a bit and give me more of an organic kind of like natural wildflower look. I want I want flowers kind of scattered all around. I don't really want to just place these down in. They were too formal for me. I just really wanted them spread out. A little bit more fairy tale, woodland, cottagey kind of vibe that I was going for. And I just continued to do that until I was happy with the flower placement. And everything goes under the UV lamp for the 200 seconds. Now that mold that you saw there, that was filmed on last night's video. That's a mold that I got from I Love Mixed Media. I was toying with the idea of creating some birds for this as well, but didn't. I felt like it might be a bit too much. As in, I created them, but I didn't add them in. You will see them afterwards. At this point, I decided to add some little garden stones. These are just decorative stones from the garden center. And I added those in and here are the birds. And I just thought, mm, bit too much. It was a bit too much. At this point, I felt like it was time to kind of bring this to a close. I felt like I'd added as much as I could possibly add. Of course, hindsight is a wonderful thing. If I were to do this kind of thing again, like a full miniature scene, I probably would have added even more flowers to bring it even more 3D. Then it was just a case of where do I put my tools? Where do I place my gardening tools? At this point, the mold is completely full up. So I know that I am getting this 3D effect. I know that by the time I place these tools down, they're going to be protruding right out of the top of the key ring and that is really the look I was going for along with the stones it's going to give it this really cool 3d effect and I just did as much as I could with this uv resin so that it wasn't like fully spilling out of the mold at this point and then I just placed them down after I placed them down, I got them into position and I whacked the UV light over. I didn't spend too much time moving them around because I knew that the more I played, the more resin would come out and over the edge and then 200 seconds under the UV lamp and done. And this is it. I think it's the most adorable, tiniest little 3D garden on the planet it might not be <laughs> it might not be i might just be making that up completely false information but how adorable is it and for someone who loves to garden i just think it is the most perfect gift i did put it back under the uv light for another 200 seconds because of that edging the moss you know the sides were a little bit sticky where the uv light hadn't quite got down under that moss 
I love this. This reminds me of a fridge magnet. You know when you go on holiday and you get those really 3D resin fridge magnets? That's what this reminds me of. Now I said earlier that hindsight is a wonderful thing. If I were to do this again, I would definitely have more layers behind the shed to make the shed cast a shadow on the background I've done similar before like you have something laid in and it casts a shadow on the back I think that would have given it even more of a 3d look instead of putting the shed straight down on that background that is what I would definitely do differently next time but I hope you have loved this at least I hope you have been inspired to try miniature because right now miniature is all I can think about it is so inspiring and this was probably the most therapeutic project I have done in such a long time you know, take the pressure off yourselves. Don't put too many rules on what you're doing and just go with the flow. Trust the process, shove it all in and it works out. Let me know what you think. Should I have put the bird on? Because it's never too late. Remember, you could always do this and then actually stick things on afterwards. You could stick your attachments on afterwards. So never feel that you have to do it this way. I could, if I wanted to, get some super glue and stick that bird into the top right hand corner. But let me know what you would add or what you would do. And also, yeah, let me know if you've been inspired by this. I hope you've enjoyed it so, so much. I cannot wait to share the next couple of videos with you. Honestly, everything you need for this video will be linked below if you fancy trying it out. And I will see you on Wednesday. Bye. <music>